right now we're back on the scan tool. One of the things I'd like to point out right here, we're on a CAN system. The other thing is there's our VIN number. It tells us we got a 3.6, all the information, the year, the horsepower of the motor. Oh, 305 in that thing. Look at that. And it's naturally aspirated. The other thing right here, it tells us the barrow is good. And one thing I like about this tool that's an ass kicker is time to engine temperature calculation. This is super, super important because forget about just the P0128. P0128 is close to nothing, let's face it. That's a code. We want to find out sometimes why a monitor won't set, why a transmission won't shift correctly, why you're having a problem. Those problems could be from a thermostat not reaching the proper temperature at the right time. So we can see that battery voltage a little high. Well, the maintainer is keeping it up at 1311, 132. We got three pending DTCs. All monitors are complete. So let's move into DTC screen, though. Now, we made these DTCs to show you something. First thing about this tool is up top, notice there are no DTCs, meaning there are no hard codes. This would not fail any inspection. Nothing would be wrong with this vehicle. You can see what we did here, P0097, intake air temperature 2, circuit low. P0113, intake air temperature circuit high. Okay, and the barrow pressure circuit low. So what do you think we did to make those codes, just to show you a pending code? Now, the reason why it's pending, we didn't drive it. We just did this in the bay, right, Bill? Yep. So tell them what you did, Bill. So we unplugged the mass airflow sensor, and all these sensors are part of that. So it threw three different codes for just the one sensor coming unplugged. Now, if we drove this thing a bit with it disconnected, it will substitute values. It may not idle the greatest or whatever, but to get you where you got to go. And we would have got freeze frame data. There's no freeze frame, hit freeze frame data, just for the hell of it. Notice it did not come up because the way the SAE ruling is, is freeze frame is only for a DTC. Right. Now, never hit the clear button like I said. It's like pouring Clorox on a crime scene. If there were codes, we'd wipe all the codes off. Yep. It'd really be sucky. Freeze frame could help us get in the ball game. Was the car cold? Was the car hot? You know, what's yeah. going on with the vehicle? This is your best chance of finding any intermittents that you might have going on or any, any evidence that shows you if you're testing that at idle in the bay and it happened at, you know, 2,000 RPMs going down the road, you're never going to find it in your bay. Yep. Uh, you need to get into that parameter, and this can really help you with that. Let's Gives go you... to read permanent codes. What mode is permanent codes, Bill? Uh, mode 10. Mode 10. So permanent codes is, does not have one because guess what? The vehicle has not had a code in it. We just put pending codes in. Pending meaning if it happens again, it's going to come up and then it would lock in here for a set period of time for exact parameters multiple times. Not like a regular code with 40 warm-up cycles or three good drive cycles. It doesn't do that. It's set by a manufacturer specifically. So mode 10 again, what years do we start with that? 2011, mid-year and up. You may find some early, but mostly mid and up. Let's go to the next important tab, uh, Bill. Let's go to monitors, monitors. here. Now, don't stuff. worry. If you don't have the scan tool, well, you could have something like that, something inexpensive that we showed you before. Okay? We don't have to spend big bucks. It's just that generically, I'm going to say misfire, fuel, comprehensive component, oxygen sensor, the heater monitor, the sensor itself, the catalyst, EGR, and EVAP are all complete. I'm not going to have the Friday night surprise. I'm not going to have a customer bent out of shape that now their check engine light came on since I fixed their car. That's one of the worst things to experience. It's not a good setup when that happens. Okay, So always go to monitors. That's why this tool is set up like that. Let's look into mode 6 now. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's pick GM on this, if you don't mind. Yep. 
So if you can, always try to pick the car rather than generically and just hit read good. Now you notice Bill picked read all mode six continuously rather than once. And the reason why continuous, if you look at the screen, you're going to see it flicker. That means it's going, hey, Mr. Computer, do I have anything new going on? Most of the time, the vehicle has to be driven, but we've done webcast here with misfires, and it came and showed us immediately without leaving the bay. So right now, we'll look at the list here. You got stuff here with O2 sensor, a lot of O2 sensor. Yep. Go down somewhat. Now, there's your catalyst. So let's highlight that catalyst part there. Notice catalyst, you have a test value of 1.29, minimum 0 0.350, maximum of 4.00. So basically, I am not near the number of 4, and I'm above 350. That means if I'm a goalpost, I'm in between them because it has a min and a max. Not all the time did it give me a min and max. The other thing to notice is notice units. Here you got voltage, you got seconds. Here it doesn't tell you anything, it's blank. That's because that is just a number the manufacturer came up with. How many of you out there have reprogrammed the car? And by the way, I highly recommend this if you got a 420, 430, especially on Toyotas, Hondas, Subarus, Czech TSBs, Nissans, basically all of those Asian cars. I would check TSBs, go to Identifex, go to Old Data, go to Pro Demand, go to Motologic, check to see if there is an update for programming. Don't change the catalytic converter right away. If, and of course, if the catalytic converter, you see it's been banged up or broken, well, of course, then you need a catalytic converter. But many times, it's just a matter of programming so we can make those parameters fit in to that yeah. goalpost. Changing percent. the goalpost. Yep, yeah. changing goalpost. And how do they get away with that? Well, you got three precious metals in a catalytic converter. You got rhodium, is a very expensive precious metal. That, break down, that breaks down noxides of oxygen. So oxides of, nit of nitrogen, NOx, platinum, palladium, breaks down hydrocarbons, HC, CO, carbon monoxide, and those precious metals have to work together. A cat that is loaded from the OE manufacturer, loaded means it has more precious metals in it. And by the way, if the cat was this big, originally you put one in this big, I don't think so. It's not going to have all those precious metals sprayed in the substrate of that catalytic converter. So there is a difference. Also, you notice when you buy one even from the dealer, and here in New York State, we could only install carb certified catalytic converters meaning the California Air Resource Board, that's what CARB is, has to certify that catalytic converter or it cannot be used here in New York State. Maine and California are the only other states, and of course California started everything, that you have to comply with that rule. One good thing for us is we don't get the customer saying, oh, can't you put this cheaper one in because we can't do it. By law, we would get a huge fine and none of the parts stores would sell it. Even good companies like Whirlpack or Napa, they will not sell you a converter in New York State that is not carb certified. And don't forget to fill the paperwork out. That's a story for another day. EVAP, so you got, this could have down to a 20 thousandths leak. And if you look at it, we're all in the passing zones. So here we have, we'll take this one right here. Natural onboard uh, uh, vacuum leak test, 0 0.117. The maximum is 0, 0. We're at 0 0.58. The other one right here, I got to put this on here. We have this EVAP uh, purge test. That purge test is 50. 50 is the, the minimum limit, so it's right on the limit, and the maximum is, and that's in seconds, 6,553. So you can see where we're going. Slide down on the scale, show them more mode six. There's heater circuit, and there's misfires. Go all the way down. So look at that. If you had a misfire, if there were any misfires, we would be counting it up. This is a great place to look 
if we were talking about that P0300 like before, right? Get you in the right cylinder at least. At least be in the right cylinder. Be in the right part of the game per se. Now, once you're done, and again, if you look at the screen for a second, you see that light flash every once in a while. Without us doing anything, you see how it flashed? It flashes to see if there's any update. Once we're done, we're going to click out of that. And let's go to PIDs, Bill. Now, this scan tool picks certain PIDs. It doesn't have calculated load um, done, but I'd like to do that. I like to see what a calculated load is, so you've got to usually click under one, then go up. There you go, and now you can get engine temperature. So when you're looking at it, you can see we got long-term fuel trim, a minus 4.6, and that's on bank one, and long-term on bank two. I don't know, something going on there. We're going to start this up. Map is 28 inches, almost, almost 29. That's pretty much perfect, so it's looking at like barrel. Zero RPMs, our O2s, we got 1.275. On that, so a little over a volt, which is common on many of these GMs. And we're going to start this up. So it's going to get a little noisy. So through the tool, this comes up with, uh, is the engine at idle? It is right now, so we're going to hit yes. And we got a fan on too. I got to shut the battery charger off. And it starts the reporting in the. So we're all good. The info side, it starts filling this stuff in. Let it go. So for right a now we got a load. When it went up there to forty something percent, air condition, everything should be off. Yep. So I have everything off on this car. And. You can see time to temperature. Go into time to temperature for a second, and let's show them something. This was a cold start as well, so it wasn't run right. in a few so hours. This is a cold start. We, we like to see this increase go up. It'll fold some boxes up as we're waiting here to make sure that this vehicle is going to get into operating temperatures before we look at any other issues. And you can see we're climbing up there pretty good kind of showing you in the green here it's giving you the average rate and by the way one thing I always like to mention is a great read by the Bosch automotive handbook I call it the automotive Bible it's look on our pits pick that calculated load again or I'll tell you what let's select all of them we talked about this before select all pits and go into graph please and I want you to graph RPM, put it on the ECT. Okay, so and maybe clear here. the graph since we're on different data. And by the way, see how, how slow that's moving? So watch, I'm going to race it up in a bit. And this thing don't like something, some fuel trim problem going on. And long term, minus 10. Pulling fuel. Bank one. And bank two. And bank two. Uh, probably from the mass airflow sensor. Maybe, yeah. When it was disconnected. So I'm going to race it up, Bill. You point to RPM and throttle and watch that response. So Ready? We're looking in the red here. And listen, I want everyone to listen. So I just, just changed to 2,500, three grand. It's still at three grand, and we're back at idle over there on the car. So and it's, now it's climbing back down. It's about at idle again right now. Still at idle, still at idle. Now so it just came up, so a couple of seconds delay? delay. Let's pick just the RPM and a few other pits. No more than six. This is why when you go to use your scan tool, you want to make sure you don't pick more than six pids. You know, you ever look at the uh, scan tools out there, Snap-on, most of them. GM was the first one to do it. 
engine one, engine two, EGR, EVAP, O2. If you had an O2 problem, you didn't go into engine one, you go into O2. If you had an EGR problem, you go into EGR. That gives you the best chance to get the updated pits. We're good, Bill? Yep, I got six. And by the way, all you do is look at the numbers and you see them flying. Here we go. Uh, right away, you saw it go right up. Definitely much quicker compared to all those all those pids being up there and it's coming right back down. So I'm definitely the refresh rate is definitely noticeable when you do it that way, just a couple of pids open. And go into uh, the uh, efficiency. Yep, that's it. Okay, start the test. It has all the numbers already in there. We're not 77 degrees, but we're about 70 or so. And basically, this thing is going to do pretty much, I'll maybe try to break rev it in reverse so we don't crush anyone. So this red is theoretical and the yellow is actual. So that's what it's comparing what it should be and what it is. Yeah, I can't really get a good rev out of it, so I don't know where we went up, but... Right, I'm going to pause that. That's one way to do it, just like we would do this on calculated load. If you don't own this tool, you could do it with any tool. It doesn't have to be expensive. Along the graphs. Again, $125 tool, graphs. So this is super important to look at where our trims are at. Now you go about the, the blocks and the grids of fuel trim. This is easy to see if we had a vacuum leak, we'd have high numbers on the bottom. If we didn't have a vacuum leak and we had a fuel delivery problem, we'd have high numbers somewhere at the top for fuel delivery. If we were bad all the way through, Bill, what is usually the number one problem? You want to start looking at a sensor. A mass air sensor is pretty common, uh, but okay. we would go right from this test right into the volumetric efficiency test, and Excellent. you're going to nail it if it's so not breathing Bill properly. nailed it right on the head. So if we had all the numbers high going through, we are basically have a load sensor problem. That would be mass, air, or map. I'll just race it up to see if we get a couple of boxes. Okay. I don't think we'll get many, if any. Uh, test drive is always good with this. Um, yeah, you're filling them in. So obviously he's not going up to the top, um, but he's in the bay, just kind of unloaded and gave it a couple. Um, but a test drive, you'll see. Right. You know, the best the thing to picture. do is test drive it. This is at idle. If we were driving it down the road and you did pedal the metal, you'll get up 90 to 100. And if we had high positive numbers, we'd say, I need delivery. And that delivery would be a request to put fuel in because right. we're too lean. Right. That's Can't get enough. And what are we going to do? We're going to first do the basic stuff. You want to ask the customer, when does it happen? Sometimes we've had cars when it's raining out or right. person makes a turn or whatever the case may be. Bumpy roads. There's yep. a great article I wrote in Motor Age magazine a while back about a vehicle with a bumpy road because the brake lights would come on was pulling on the fuel pump circuit, and that fuel pump circuit wasn't allowing fuel to be delivered because of a bad ground, okay? So sometimes you gotta listen to the customer, yeah. you gotta look at it. Again, the brain, the eyes, the ears, the nose, the hands, you need to look at all the stuff, then go out to the vehicle, a quick scan test is good to do. Yeah. We said we wanna do relative compression as a quick first check, you want to research stuff in all data, ProDemand, uh, Denefix, Motorlogic, IATN, and um, Diag.net, Google, and YouTube. All of those are helpful. And call your buddy up. Right. Hey, a lot of times your buddy may know something you don't know. You know, I wish I knew everything. I don't. You learn from each other. And it's about share, sharing. 